money it should, for a tax haven. Should. No, it shouldn't. And there's a bias against it. And you're saying there's a, there's a bias well, for it. So how are you going to fix it? How are you going to make it easier for children to get to these schools? By making sure the statements are not provided by the local educational authority, but provided by somebody separate, but then you actually get what you want, you get what you need. But what your manifesto actually says is that you want to reverse the bias towards the inclusion of children in mainstream schools. Look at your own manifesto, it's what it says. I feel more passionate about this subject. I, I understand that. I understand that. But I'm telling you, it's the wrong way to go. You're not representing the needs of children in mainstream education. You want to segregate disabled children. I really don't. And we can go on about this. You can come and see me if you like. In my well, I'd love to. And would you would you meet some children of, of, of disabled some parents of disabled children who are struggling to get their children into mainstream I, I, schools? I, I do all the and time. And I, would, I love to. I would love to do that because I feel very passionately about this subject. So we've got to get children into the school that they want, whether it's mainstream or whether it's special. But, but why doesn't your manifesto say you want to encourage children into mainstream schools? It absolutely does say that, sir. I promise you. Your, your manifesto does not I say. I wrote it, sir. I can't do any more than to promise. I want you to get what's right for your son. And I can tell you the battle I had with my son to get the education he needed. And it, you know, I know how much it rips families apart, sir. But I absolutely promise you, we are trying to get what you want for your children. It should be your choice. The moment the yes, state but, has too but much what power choice do I have if I have to battle for two years? You shouldn't have to battle. And you want to say you want to reverse the bias no, toward no, including no, no, children? Sir, the whole point is that at the moment you don't get what you want because the state doesn't respond. No, to that is saying. not the point. The point is there's a bias against the inclusion of children, not for, which is what your manifesto says there. I went through it. I went through it. No, you didn't. You didn't try and get your child into a mainstream school with respect. I did. Anyway, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you very much. someone who has been on the front lines of fighting the subversion of the British Isles into airstrip one of the European federal superstate 
And that, of course, is Brian Gerrish, former naval officer, and of course now with the British Constitution Group. Uh, and also, I might add, the man who basically was the first to lift the lid on the sinister common purpose organisation which has infested its operatives into every level of British society. So we're going to cover a host of uh, interesting topics today. Brian Gerrish, good morning and welcome to the Alex Jones Show. Yeah, good morning, Paul, and thank you and Alex and all the rest of the crew for, for giving me an invite to speak. Well, it's, you're welcome to be back on the show. F uh, first of all, obviously you've been a guest previously, but before we get into the whole Liam Fox issue and the cover-up surrounding that, just tell us about your background and how you first began to uncover groups like Common Purpose and what they were up to in the United Kingdom. Okay, well, it's, um, we'll keep it very short. I, I spent 21 years in, in the Navy um, as a warfare officer. I left in 1993. Um, I got involved in uh, uh, in a small business, um, started to become what I'll call a normal person. And then in my home city of Plymouth, which is down in the southwest of, of um, England, I started to discover massive fraud and corruption. And much of it was to do with public money. So I started to dig into that more. Um, and strange things began to happen because essentially I, I started to be threatened and warned off. And I wasn't too impressed with that because I'd always believed that my country was generally law abiding. Um, but then things came to a head when I tried to start a little project to help give unemployed young people some skills training and some hope from the future. And it was obvious that, that the local elite did not want this project to happen. And when I started to investigate why, not only did I get threatened more, including death threat, um, but I discovered a very uh, sinister little organization called Common Purpose at work. And essentially, with, um, I'll say now with hindsight, because it's much easier now to look back and put the pieces together, the reason that I was treated in the way I was treated was because I was trying to help people, I was trying to help create jobs, I was trying to get um, uh, confidence back into local communities, when unknown to me at the time, the government policy was the exact opposite. It was to destroy jobs, it was to break down communities, and it was to reduce young people to unemployed druggies. So that was the start of it. When I then began to really research into the subject and I began to get very good people helping me, um, we, we discovered that this organization, Common Purpose, which calls itself a charity, but what it was really doing was, was inserting a very, very dangerous political agenda into everywhere it could get. And Common Purpose was and still is. It's in the political circles. It's in schools. It's in hospitals. It's in the military, um, and their so-called graduate leaders are pushing forward the, the overall political agenda which is causing such problems.
UK government may consider the development of chemical weapons for domestic law enforcement. That's according to the National Academy of Sciences. The group of experts has asked UK officials to clarify their intentions for these substances. The nerve gases being discussed were banned from military use nearly 20 years ago. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by Mark Bergfeld. He's from the Education Activist Network here in Britain. So the chemical agents being discussed have been banned from use in warfare, as I've just mentioned. Why? would the UK government imagine them to be suitable for domestic use? What we have seen over the last one and a half years is mass resistance taking it to the streets with the students movement at first, with the continued strike movement and trade union movement coming to the streets as well as the riots in, in August. And what we have seen is that the police time and time again has lost control of the streets and thus it doesn't come as a surprise in the context of global revolutions and revolt that now the UK is, try, is starting to use the same measures as countries as Mubarak has done in Egypt or even the Greek government has done to its very own citizens over the general strike. But just how dangerous are these chemicals supposed to be? What effect could they have on you? Um, the incapacitated uh, nerve gas, as it, is, as it is called, has been used against protesters in the June general strike in Greece, and Amnesty International condemned the use of that tear gas uh, in normal language, it's called choking gas, and has said that the Greek government has waged a chemical warfare upon its very own citizens. Now, you can actually die from the, from the gases be, uh, being used against protesters, against larger crowds.